Hi and welcome to this tutorial about GRASS and SiteXFOG4. If you've already followed the um, XFOG 3.5 tutorial about um, creating a patch of GRASS, you'll notice um, most of the steps. It's actually a pretty similar process of creation. Just the um, user interfaces are different. The basic idea, the basic uh, concept is the same of course. So please open the step 1 file. It already includes uh, four different materials, uh, one with a billboard of a little grass cluster and three single grass blades. First of all we need a grass blade. To do so I'll add a um, XFOG branch component to the scene. You can see it right here. The profile um, doesn't suit our conception, so we need to replace the circle profile with our own custom profile. Open up the hierarchy of the branch component. I'll double click and rename it to uh, blade 1. This will be our first single blade. Right here you can see the circle profile. I'll switch into the front view. Now go into point mode um, and choose um, the linear spline tool for example and just draw something similar to this. I'll rename that to blade 1 profile. It's always a good idea to uh, name the components and parts of uh, the different um, yeah, uh, hierarchies. We can remove the original profile. Uh, the reason why it's a good idea is we can use the new um, search field of uh, Cinema R10. And later on, if, if you want to change all the profiles, just enter profile and now only our profile splines will be displayed so this is uh, very handy so it's a good idea to keep a consistent naming and therefore I'll rename the path spline to blade 1 path so you can see here we have our um, well simple grass blade When you take a look at the different attributes of our blade path spline, you'll notice that we have uh, nine intermediate points. Um, this means our um, well grass blade creates a lot of polygons. You can see it right here. So I'll reduce the intermediate points to about two or three. Actually, we already could apply the material of the first grass blade. This is what I'm doing right here. Just drag and drop. You'll notice that the material seems to be upside down. Therefore, you have to go for the activate the material tag, go for the material tag attributes, and choose minus one for tiles Y. So now um, our bitmap is lined in the right way. Um, you'll notice a second um, problem. At the top of uh, the grass blade the texture is squashed. The texture uses an, an embedded alpha channel to create the outline. So we don't need the thickness parameter of XROC4 to create an outline. Therefore I'll simply select those points with shift select, right click, delete control points and set the rightmost to 100%. So now we avoid the distortion which uh, has been caused by the thickness curve. So basically that's it. We have our first simple um, grass blade and now we'll use the 
flu taxes object to um, well create a little cluster out of this grass plane. Add a full taxes object to the scene, open the hierarchy and drag the blade inside the full taxes. You can see that we have to adjust uh, the arc spline which defines the opening angle of our full taxes object. Change the start angle from minus 90 degrees to about let's say 35 degrees and reduce the radius to about two, two units, something like this. And I'll also switch back to default Gouraud shading. So here you can see our um, grass blade objects. Of course it looks very very regular and not uh, natural. This is because uh, all the blades uh, look exactly the same. Another point is that we need a curvature. So open the blade object, add a trapezium object to the scene, rename that one to blade one tropism and drag it inside the path spline. You'll have noticed, you might have noticed that now the um, leaves start to grow upwards, to bend upwards. Therefore, we'll have to change the axis to minus y and increase the strength. So here we have um, the first simple cluster. To create a more realistic look we'll add some variations um, to this cluster and XROP4 luckily offers a component called variation object. So add this variation object to the scene, drag it inside the full taxis, then drag the blade and put it inside this variation object. You might have to refresh the scene. So for now everything looks the same. But now we'll create a copy of this first blade. I'll simply do this by control drag and drop. I'll rename it to uh, blade 2 and also rename the um, different uh, splines. So now we could uh, for example change the tropism parameter a little bit so that those um, grass blades are bent or more influenced by gravitation. Uh, second I'll use a different material. Again it might be useful to refresh the scene so that you can see the result. Now you can you'll notice that we have two different colors right here. Also we could work on the profile of uh, the second blade. In this case I'll make the V-shape stronger and probably I'll well, reverse it to something like this. So now we have one a blade with a reddish, slightly reddish color, one blade with a green color and uh, therefore it looks already much better. But still there's a long way to go if we want to create a reali realistic um, patch of grass. One good way is to make use of the noise function, but therefore we'll have to replace um, the curve or the path spline. So please add a curvature spline. Rename this one to blade to path. We can drag the tropism object in here and then simply replace the first one. So there is not much difference right now. Um, actually the curvature spline is a little bit longer but that's okay. We can keep the length. That's also a nice variation. Now activate this uh, curvature spline and take a look at its attributes. Down here you can see the parameters rotation X, Y, and Z. By clicking this arrow we can open up um, the function field and in here we'll use a function similar to this one. Noise 
which returns us random values u this is a ramp basically going from the left side to the right side of the curve I'm multiplying this value so that there is a more well more variation inside then I'm adding I on top of that I stands for iteration so each blade will get get a different iteration number and therefore each uh, well, blade will have a different rotation because uh, the noise returns different values if you uh, enter different values in here I'm multiplying iteration with phi 5 again just to increase this effect and then probably to increase the well frequency of this noise I'll add another 50 on top of that now I'm multiplying this equation with x why I'm doing this I'm doing this so that I can use the control curve to control the strength of the noise and now you'll already notice I'll turn off this blade one and I'm reducing the number so that we get a better impression of what is happening so now you can see that we have already slight difference uh, of the curvature and we'll increase this effect you can see it, that all blades have a different curvature um, if you scroll down you'll notice that we have by default a value of 20 segments which produces um, well, too many polygons I'll reduce that to about 8 this also has the effect that the um, well, different uh, curvatures, different rotations um, get more apparent now right click the rotation X parameter choose copy and paste it onto uh, rotation Z I'll just enter uh, change some of the value values in here so that we get different noise values along this axis so now you can see that we have a pretty drastic uh, well effect of this noise formula now turn on the original blade probably we want to create a copy of this one rename it to blade 3 again rename all the splines and tropism objects then we can work on the noise function again first of all I'll reduce the effect of the noise on this one So we have uh, the straight ones with a regular path spline. We have those really gnarly ones uh, with the curvature spline and some other, which also use the curvature spline and the noise function, but with a less, less drastic effect. And finally, I'll use the third grass blade material on this one. Again, refresh the scene. And now we have uh, a much better looking cluster of grass. So now we need to increase the density of this cluster. Of course, we could choose the full taxes object and again increase the number. Um, but this um, well, will give us many, many polygons. And I'll try to avoid this we'll um, well increase the density the volume of this cluster instead by uh, using well a low poly blade which uses the texture of a little grass cluster so we basically could copy uh, blade 3 and rename it to cluster 1 again I'll rename the parts of it here we go um, for now I'll turn off the single blades and now if we take a look at the um, cluster texture you'll notice that um, it's much broader 
uh, from from the ratio compared to the uh, single grass blades. So I'll select the profile of the cluster one object and simply increase its width to about well, let's try 180. I think we could use even more, probably 280, something like this, and drag the material of the billboard of the cluster. Refresh. Now you can see that this one gives us a lot of um, well density and volume because uh, the bitmap um, carries a lot of information. I'd like this uh, cluster object to be more upright, so I'll reduce the strength of gravitation and at the base I'll even well drag it a little bit upwards. So I'm adding a control point to the curve and then simply uh, drag this one downwards so um, the billboard cluster will be dragged upwards at the base. Now we can turn on our single grass blades. This would be the result. And so this um, well object gives us a lot of density, a lot of volume without increasing too much our polygon count. Actually we could reduce the number of segments used um, for this one Now probably slightly increase the overall number and we are done. Of course there is also a lot of room um, to fine tune this cluster. For example if you don't like the distribution of the single blades and clusters you can activate the variation object and change the random seed. If you, if you would like to have uh, more cluster objects compared to the single blades, simply increase the number of cluster objects in here. Then the ratio of clusters used will be higher compared uh, to the blades. It's also possible to use a random scaling of those objects. For this you can activate the full taxes object, go down for the um, scale parameter right here, open up the function field and now I'll enter 1 which would mean all objects would receive a size of 1 or 100%. Then I'll add a noise on top of that. Again, I'm using U as gradient, adding a value to increase the frequency and multiply this equation with x so that I can use the control curve to control the strength of the noise. So if, if, if you want higher noise values simply drag the control points upwards or just slight variations of about 30 percent and it should look like this. So these were the basic steps to create a cluster of grass inside XROC4 for Cinema 4D. We were using the branch component with a flat profile to create our um, single grass blades and also the cluster object. We make use of the full taxes object to arrange the single blades and clusters inside this patch of grass. And to increase the realism of this uh, cluster of grass, we're using the variation object and inside uh, simply different versions of uh, grass blades and uh, little billboard objects. And the variation object then chooses on a random base uh, which of those objects is used inside. So now it's time for you to create your own grass. Thanks for watching.